Projection. Here is the age of the self-assembled self. Before the fatal upflower of fiction our lives were our own. The stories we knew were the people we knew. The selves we were were the things we saw our body do. In time we learned to predict these things, and we would say, this is me, this is myself. Narrated by Skeptical Waves. Published Monday, August 16, 2021 by Curtis Yarvin. Here is the age of the self-assembled self. Before the fatal upflower of fiction our lives were our own. The stories we knew were the people we knew. The selves we were were the things we saw our body do. In time we learned to predict these things, and we would say, this is me, this is myself. Then we started watching movies. We would read paperbacks from the rack, or see a play in Greek, it's all the same. And we learned to tell such stories too. And who was our main character? Whose arms and limbs could animate sans fee? So our stories stole ourselves. From people we descended to protagonists and became spellbound by our diaries. We put the best years of our lives, which should have been our twenties, into the job of reading this book of ourselves. Of course we were just writing the book. Meanwhile, our actual selves lived on, undisturbed and unobserved. We would screw up this or that, or something good would happen to us, or sometimes something funny, and we would write these incidents into the book. The bookstore grew a self-help section, a therapy section, a drama section, even biographies were our books in print, to say nothing of the poetry. Cowboys beware. The New Yorker is not far behind you, like Tolkien's of this grand new world we made whole languages to explore the undiscovered continents of us, some of these sections are barely in English. Imagine being a human being so subtle that the architecture of your heart could not explain itself in the tongue of Hemingway. A new species in a new age. My own view is that everything bad in the last century was done to transcend mere humanity, it was a great flowering of sentiment. Feeling, however, was nowhere to be found, feeling, a white alligator consigned to some sewer, unobserved and undisturbed, eating shit, condoms, rats and dead hitmen. Yet as our bodies ceased to magically heal and we came into our thirties, which is now for most the decade of maturity, we found what troubled us most was this disparity between the books of ourselves and the things we saw our body do. This we had attributed to production issues, careless animators, no. It was the alligator, the self itself, undisturbed and unobserved, which really drove arms and legs and lips and tongue. The actor kept deviating from the script. And as we kept writing down what happened as if the plot points still fit the character, we started to see there was another script. This script was shorter and less flattering. It did smell of the sewer in which it lived. Maybe some partner would say to us, as a mot d'escalier, you've told me a lot of stories about why you do what you do. Your soul is a fascinating book of mystery at which your lovely eyes have barely hinted. Problems, though, began when I began to think, like some rogue algorithm, that your actions were no mystery at all and could always be predicted, at every choice you chose whatever would make you feel the most power over me. Naturally this was not your plan. It was certainly nothing the author of your diary, who though mysterious and subtle as gentle and kind, would do. But your gator was just hungry. And he ends by thanking us for a good lesson in keeping away from girls without a good handle on their gator. At this point, our bodies already starting to sag and flab and ache, we realized that this character in our own book, which we spent so much in writing, banking the best years of our bodies on these unpublished autobiographies, was not real and not us. Instead we were the things we saw our bodies do. Our diaries went in the little free library and the tawdry work of adulthood began, meeting this cave reptile, adopting him, teaching him to trot after us like a dog, but never off-leash at the dog park, never without some lunge and nibble, no special food can make him anything but what he is. In truth there is not much to know about him. Like golden retrievers everyone's gator is basically the same gator, just bigger or smaller, and it is this work, which is not made of insight but of effort, which is not a drama but a grind, which will never be perfect and always be ugly, which finally makes us into the people we will die as. Can we still be good people? But that was never for the author to say, only the actual reader of the actual book.